But what I want to bring attention to is how the titles are formatted. Because we're going to see, I guarantee you, a lot of commonalities among all three of these top sellers' channels. Let's analyze. They all have the word free first in parentheses or brackets. Let's be honest, you're not gonna find these videos anywhere else. Why? Because I make them. So it would really help me out if you subscribe. If you've already subscribed, what also really helps is if you like the video and leave a comment. It's hard in the era of clickbait videos on YouTube and negativity in the producer community. And I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Peace, what's going down? I hope you're well if you are watching this video. And I hope you're well if you're not watching this video, but you have no idea what my wishes are if you're not watching this video. This is completely off the cuff, no, no notes, no planning, 100% authentic. I want to deep dive into how to sell more beats, how to, how to uh, improve your beat selling strategy, and honestly, one of the, the best ways of doing anything, we know this as producers, when we first started making beats, we use this all the time to learn how to make better beats. It's the whole reverse engineering method. A lot of producers are frustrated. They can't sell beats. Um, they're not making the progress they think they should. And so, yeah, you could go out and, and buy a bunch of beat selling courses and, and leave all the hype behind those and, and listen to the advice of countless producers who may or may not actually be selling beats themselves. Now, that's, that's one method. I don't recommend that method. I just dropped these brand new samples. I'm not gonna tell you that they're dope. I'm gonna show you what they sound like. So I just made some drums here. And I'm gonna drag a sample in. I'm probably gonna have to change the pitch a little bit. So that was so easy. Check this out. All these samples are original. They are sample clearance guaranteed, so you won't have a crazy situation like what's going on maybe with Bobby Smurder's album getting pushed back. Use these samples for beats that you lease. Use these samples for placement. Use these samples for sync licenses. Use these samples for a, a lo-fi instrumental tape. Here's the link, bit.ly forward slash painkillers3. Appreciate you getting it. Thank you so much. Let me know what you think. If you make a beat with it uh, and, and you want to share it, just tag me in it so I can check it out. I think there's a lot of value in self-direction and learning for for yourself learning on your feet trying things that are based on tried and true methods and and observable progress so what do i mean by observable progress well that goes back to the whole reverse engineering thing what's actually working we can see with our own eyes what's actually working sometimes it, it requires a little bit of analysis uh, for example, you know, we, we might perceive that somebody on Instagram is really popular because they get a lot of likes and they have a lot of followers. But when we analyze their engagement, we see that those followers and, and those likes and those comments are from fake profiles. Um, so we have to have the same level of analysis and discernment when we're looking at, you know, uh, the method I'm about to show you today, looking at at what other producers are doing that is effective and is helping them to sell beats. So let's get right into it. I'm going to show you where I would start. I, I, this is a safe bet. So I would start personally by just logging into my BeatStars account and going to tracks and checking out the top charts because the top charts aren't based on plays or popularity or you know, things that can be fake, they're based on sales, raw sales. So especially if we're searching by, by genre, that would, that would help. So let's say you make trap beats, that's probably a more competitive category. Let's look at who the top producers are in this category. So these are ads, I'm not counting them. Let's look at shot for shot and let's actually Let's actually check out the top three. Let's check out the top three and, and see what happens. See what we find out. So clearly this beat is doing well. It's, it's at almost, Jesus, a million plays. So this, this person's probably making a killing off of this. We're gonna check out their profile. 
They have a lot of plays. They're doing well. They're they're at roughly three million plays. They're at nearly thirty thousand followers, and they have three hundred and four tracks. So, a lot of producers ask questions such as, "How many tracks should I upload? How often should I upload beats?" Uh, and and honestly, the answer is who knows it really depends on you it depends on your strategies it depends on the the fans that you attract and your followers and your subscribers but what you will find and let's see if this is the case here you 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 will probably find that the top selling producers certainly have hundreds of beats not not you know 50 beats not a hundred beats usually a little more uh this person is an exception but he's creeping towards 100 so i think having a a solid number of beats is helpful certainly helpful um and you can see that that these folks are a little more well established but this producer is on the come up and 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 he is gaining uh followers which is great you know you can see that that everyone's numbers are different but as long as you're putting in the work you can you can start to grow your your base of followers and therefore your sales your your customer base now i think it's important to note that beat stars is a great source of traffic don't underestimate the marketplace the marketplace is is this you know if i'm going to search for drake type beat this is the marketplace and a lot of artists find beats this way a lot of artists find beats this way don't underestimate that However, it is your responsibility to bring traffic to your site. I know there are producers who say, I signed up for BeatStars and I was uploading beats every day and I didn't get any sales because they expected BeatStars to give them sales for them. Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be amazing if I just joined Amazon and woke up the next day with $1,000. With it's, it's not how that works. You have to do the work. So... Let's talk about bringing traffic to your beat store. And I want to see how these these three producers are doing it. I have no idea who these these producers are, um, but it looks as though they all have multiple platforms that I would say purportedly at least are bringing them traffic to their beat store. Uh, Just Dan has Instagram, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Bash has the same three. Um, Day Wilder has YouTube and Instagram. Let's see how they're they're using these respective the, their respective social media. Um, already, you can see that that Day Wilder makes it very easy and very clear in their profile how to contact them to get beats. They have their Beat Stars link right there. They have their email right there, and they make it clear that they are leasing beats make it very clear looks like their highlights are full of beats yeah so you can preview them right there it's it's damn near like they're they've incorporated their beat store into their instagram i think this is a great strategy um their aesthetic is is pretty consistent i don't know if these are beat videos no they're not they're actually i think photos that they took so this is this person is artsy but you can see there's consistency in their visual branding which a lot of producers don't have. Now, I wonder if this carries over, and I bet you it carries over to their YouTube. Let's see. And yes, you can see that they're using, you know, the, the, the cropped thumbnail look, but at the same time, they have this sort of marbled background, and it's consistent across the board. Every, it just adds, having, having that background adds consistency to um their their aesthetic here and and they're very consistent with it um the other thing i want to point out and this is kind of dope i I don't know what happened here this this beat was obviously very successful but on average i wouldn't say they're exactly killing it you know what i mean And, and a lot of people have this perception that you have to absolutely just just kill it on on youtube you know, get crazy views in order to make any sort of progress or any sort of sales. I can't see my camera's in the way. And 
it's just it's not necessarily the case you know if you have solid consistent views um you can get there now it looks to me as though they're uploading you know maybe two beats a week which i i, I would say isn't that many but they're doing something right if i go to their beat store let's see how often they're uploading beats I don't know if I can tell nowadays. Let's see. Okay, so they're, they're only uploading about two a week. I guess that works for them. And it seems as though they're sticking with... Oh, no, their, their YouTube is actually all over the place. And I wonder if, based on their numbers, if they focused more on something like the Jack Harlow type beat. Let's see what they're ranking in on this particular... Uh, beat oh my gosh look 96 this is this is why this went viral um and this is this is vid iq i just have the free version it's analyzing all this yep they're ranking on a lot of these categories but what you see this is interesting they didn't go to target drake type beat they didn't try to target jack harlow type beat because those are incredibly competitive keywords they targeted drake x jack harlow type beat 2022 now let's see how competitive that keyword is this is what i'm using here is two buddy premium to check the viability of a keyword okay and this is an excellent keyword um this is weighted to my channel but if it's unweighted it's still a, a solid keyboard that's why i like the premium uh two buddy plugin because it will give you a weighted score so that would work for my channel, but it might not work for others. Now let's check out Bash. Let's check out their Instagram. Let's check out their YouTube. Okay, their Instagram is literally empty. Let's see how their YouTube is going. Now, similar situation, you know, they're, they're consistent and it looks like they're uploading almost every day. So the consistency is there and they've been doing this. They've been doing this for a while and yet they're still clearly selling beats. Uh, you know, some of the beats are taking off and you can tell that they tend to be focusing on two keyword niches here. Young nudie type beat, Pierre Bourne type beat. Now, are they successfully ranking in some of these keywords and let's let's look at their keywords also um i'll, I'll get to this in a second actually um oh my god they have no tags i would have a conversation with them about this yeah no tags at all <coughs> excuse me let's try just dan he has had this profile for longer we're gonna check out actually let's check out all three because a lot of people a lot of producers don't use SoundCloud anymore and it looks like uh, they're using it to promote music that was produced by them which is also smart because it is uh, it, it's what I guess that's called social proof you know it, it they're, they're showing potential artists look these are the songs that resulted from somebody getting my beats look at them and some of them have a, a good amount of, of plays and either way you want to showcase music that you're proud of whether it's beats or songs because the end result of, of the, the beat is a, is a song right okay so this <laughs> they have a lot of subscribers and they're killing it on the beats However, they only upload once a week. I don't know what kind of SEO work they're doing. Clearly, and look at, look, this is vidIQ. It's telling me VPH is views per hour. So a lot of these videos are doing super well. And again, like the last producer, they're focusing on a limited number of keyword niches. They're not going Drake type beat, Ariana Grande type beat, Afro beat type beat. Kendrick Lamar type beat, they're really sticking to, um, you know, the kind of soulful 
keywords like the Dreamville artist and Kendrick Lamar. And it does look like the Kendrick Lamar Dreamville keywords are, are doing well. And let's see what they're ranking in. Because they're clearly ranking in something to be getting these views. Yeah, so look at these ranks. They're number two for JID type beat, which I imagine is bringing a lot of traffic. And they're number one for Dreamville type beat. So there's no way, there's no way that this is not a highly competitive keyword that's bringing them tons of traffic. Eh, I don't know if I believe that. Let's look. JID type beat, Dreamville type beat. Yeah, so it, this is a poor keyword because the competition is so high. You, you, you need, you know, to get over 3,000 plays, authentic plays on your beat video just to rank, I think, on the first page for that particular keyword. So that is an amazing keyword to be ranked number one on. And free Dreamville type beat, I imagine, is equally competitive. Let's see. These two, this is why I recommend getting these two. Yeah, look at that. Um, the competition is a little lower. So this may be one of those keywords that is up for grabs. Again, this is why it's good to have these tools and this is why it's good to kind of spy on what other people are doing because you can spy on their keywords and get keyword ideas for yourself because you may be able to break into some of these keyword niches depending on the data that, that you that you uh, that you gather from from doing this now yep so the link is right there the, again reverse engineering let's let's look at something that a lot of these you do and let's look at some others we're, we're gonna go towards YouTube YouTube is one of those those things where like I'll be honest I don't know what the hell's going on with YouTube uh, but it, it does seem new new channels are are being prioritized. Take that for, for what you will. Okay, so again, similar consistency in, in the visual branding and very similar format. You know, I switched up my thumbnails because I was noticing that this format was just kind of what people were gravitating towards. Yeah, you can see similar format, consistent visuals. But what I want to bring attention to is how the titles are formatted, because we're going to see, I guarantee you, a lot of commonalities among all three of these top sellers channels. Let's analyze. They all have the word free first in parentheses or brackets. They seem to be targeting, well, three or more, well, two or more, I should say, uh, keywords in the title. You definitely want to put the keywords in the title. I've said this a million times. And right away, you can see the link to their beat stars. It's, it's immediate. You, they're not making people search for it. Something I would suggest is what way Too gone is doing. They are taking the, the beat store link, and this is nice too, putting the, the tempo and the key. They're, they're taking the beat store link and putting it in a comment, leaving a comment on their own video, but pinning it so that it's the very first comment people see. Because trust me, I'm gonna tell you something right now. You can make it as easy as possible to, for, for a potential customer to find that link, you can put it right there in the, the description, right at the top, and they will not find that link. They will still leave a comment saying, how do I purchase this? And so if you put the link right there as, as a top comment, as a pinned comment, uh, it's less likely that they're gonna be confused. They're also using the hashtags. Um, they are keyword stuffing. Does it work? Probably, and that's why YouTube is, is maybe against it. Again, there are ways, I'm not telling you to cheat the YouTube system. 
because you will put your channel at risk but there are certain ways to to cheat the youtube system um something else that's cool is who is this this is young swisher he has a he has deals right there listed not just the bulk deals but also a discount code so anyone who is uh i guess but oh no he put he again Young Swisher is another producer who's pinning a comment with all the, the relevant information, the necessary information to make it easy for a potential customer to find the beat and buy the beat. Um, more keyword stuffing. Look, I made a video about how keyword stuffing can, can lead to your channel being demonetized. Is that true? Yeah, obviously it is. Is it a risk that many producers are willing to make if it's bringing traffic to their their videos? Yeah, clearly. Uh, and and selling beats on BeatStars is probably making you more money than YouTube monetization. So you're you're doing a, a cost benefit analysis or a risk assessment, whatever the hell it's called. You're you're weighing your options. You know what's worth more: selling more beats, getting more more traffic to my beat store, or getting money from YouTube. Well beat store that's worth more so i'm just gonna i'm gonna do whatever it takes and again like i said youtube is a mystery as far as how to how to break through the algorithm these days i don't know that's why i'm making this video so we can analyze to see what other producers are doing to be successful and it looks as though keyword stuffing is i mean it's what all three of them are doing so I'm not telling you to do it. I'm definitely not telling you to do it. I'm just showing you what's happening. Now, what else? Um, we can go back to the to the Beat Stars pages because again, I told you that the marketplace is a is a often overlooked feature of Beat Stars, and Young Swisher I think is using their 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 uh, Beat Stars page to their highest ability. Um, not only do they have 450 beats and a lot of plays, you know, no surprise there, but they have albums, they have sound kits, they have services, and they have playlists. I, again, these options exist for a reason. The playlists exist for a reason. They're searchable. Um, the albums exist for a reason. They're searchable. Services are searchable. This is why I say the marketplace is underrated because the same way people are searching for beats on YouTube, they're searching for beats right here on BeatStar. So you have a built-in audience on the platform. Again, reverse engineer. Um, things change all the time. The YouTube algorithms change all the time. Consumer behavior, the behavior of your, your beat customers changes aesthetics change you know the style of thumbnails this stuff is going to change all the time I, i'm speaking right now in june of 2022 this this could all change next month that's why it's important to make sure that you are able to observe and analyze these these trends and i didn't even go deep into you know google analytics and and things like that i have no idea what these producers are doing behind the scenes in terms of DM strategies in terms of other integrations such as SMS marketing or email marketing. That's those those are other very effective but also complicated uh, uh, methods of, of marketing. But to start with, we can observe what's working and we can ad adapt that to what we're doing. I'm not saying steal what's what's what what these other producers are doing because what what what's working for another producer might not work for me, you know. For example, th this whole Drake type beat thing, I I don't really that's not my niche. So what what's working for a Drake type beat customer might not work for for what I'm doing, you know, the soulful type beat lane. Um, so try to find producers that are really in in similar subgenres as you with similar aesthetics that kind of thing and see if what they're doing makes sense so analyze it and then ask yourself can i incorporate some of what some of their strategies into my my overall beat marketing strategy and if so how 
and then just kind of start there. Um, hopefully this helps. This is something that you can do yourself. Don't just look at my video and say, okay, cool, I got it. Go, go on these journeys yourself. Take the time necessary to observe what others are doing. And hopefully it works out. Of course, there are no guarantees. But the more information you have and the more you experience, the more likely you are to formulate a much more effective beat selling strategy for yourself. All right. Much success to you. Catch you on the next video. Peace.